the Imam Salamullah Alayh is well known because he witnessed the downfall of the Umayyad dynasty and the rise of the Abbasis dynasty. This political unrest provided him with the opportunity to publicly teach about Islam, but the Islam of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. The Islam that Allah brought down to humanity, not the Islam of Bani Umayyah. He started to produce individuals who were very well versed and very knowledgeable in religion. As I mentioned earlier today in Salatul Jumu'ah, during his time, Muslims' ideologies started to go right, left, and center. The works of Plato and Aristotle started to be translated. So Muslims started to get familiar with some of these works. And they started to be influenced by them. Adopting some of these theories and ideologies. In addition to this, people, because they left Amirul Mu'mineen, Salamullahi Alayh, the teachings of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alayhi Wa Alayh, and they followed that man who, when the Prophet was on his deathbed asking for a pen or a paper or the equivalent of pen and paper, he said, Hasbuna Kitabullah. We have the book of Allah and it's enough for us. They followed that. The problem is they do not understand Kitabullah. They don't understand it. So each one of them started to interpret it his own way, which created chaos. By the time of Al Imam al Sadiq, السلام, this chaos started to penetrate in the Muslim world. A major school started to materialize, known as the Mu'tazilites. Mu'tazilites said that we have a complete free will. The human being chooses whatever he wants. Opposite, another school of thought came, the Asha'irites, who said, no, we have absolutely no free will. It's all predestined. That latter school of thought was prospered, funded by the Umayyads. Why? It makes perfect sense. Why did you become the Khalifa? Allah chose me the Khalifa. You know, why? Do you have something to protest against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why do you steal people's money? Allah, like Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, used to say, Al Malu Malullah. The money is Allah's money. وَأَنَا خَلِيفَةُ اللَّهِ But I am representing Allah. So if I wish to give, I give. And if I wish to deprive, I deprive. You know, I represent Allah. خلاص. End of story. That kind of ideology propagated. And that kind of ideology spread. Although the school became known as the Asha'arites in relationship to Abu al-Hasan al-Ash'ari, who came a bit later, but the roots of that teachings was there. You find Abu Hanif and Nu'man having such teachings, have such roots. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam came to clarify, it is not complete free will, nor it is complete predestiny. It is somewhere in the middle. You have the choice to eat the food, whether it is halal or haram, that's your choice. No one is forcing you. You choose to eat halal. You want to pay your khums and make your food halal. That's your choice. No one forces you. Okay. You want to eat halal meat. That's your choice. No one forces you. Once you put that bite in your mouth and you chew it, that's all you voluntary so far. Once you push it inside, can you control what happens next? Khalas. Then it's a system that you have no control over. So free will 
and predestiny somewhere in the middle. Okay. With regards to legislation, ahkam, sharia, Allah does not force anyone to do anything. That's your choice. But when it comes to the system of creation, the creation, like what happens inside after you swallow the bite, that food, that's all creation system. That you have no control over. Don't have control over that. Okay. So you see somewhere in the middle, Imam al came to clarify. He raised a group of individuals, scholars, to carry this kind of knowledge. A man from Sham comes to Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. He comes to him and he says, I hear you have answers to all kinds of sciences. He says, so what would you like? He says, I want to challenge you. Discuss. About what? Quran. Imam says, okay, have a seat. He turns to one of his companions or students. Humran ibn A'yun. He says, Humran, go ahead, challenge him. The man from Sham says, I don't want to challenge Humran. I want to challenge you. He says, challenge him. If you can defeat him, it's as if you've defeated me. Go ahead. He argues with Humran. He loses the argument. Humran wins. He comes back to Imam al-Sadiq. I want to challenge you again. About what? This time about Arabic language. No problem. Abban ibn Taghlub, get up. It's your turn. Challenge him. The man loses the argument. Comes back again. I want to challenge you about something and so on and so forth. Up to six things. Every time the Imam calls one of his students and the man loses. Until the man turns to Imam al Sadiq, alayhi salam, this Shami. He says, It is as if you are trying to tell me that such people are your Shia. He says, Yes, indeed. Those are my Shia. The ilm they have, the knowledge they have. It is such people that carry the knowledge to us today. The knowledge that sometimes we take for granted. Such people. Who today I mentioned one of them, Muhammad ibn Abi Umair. Ibn Abi Umair spent 17 years in the prison of Harun. 17 years. Being tortured, being beaten. His wealth was taken away from him. He was a wealthy man, businessman of fabrics. He comes back after 17 years living in the dungeon, in darkness, blind. All his wealth is gone. All his books were destroyed. But does he stop? No, he's still now. He says, whatever I remember from my masters, As-Sadiq wal Kadhum alayhim as -salam, I will tell you. And people start to write his ahadith. Such people, that's how the knowledge was carried to us. Through such people. Such were the Shia.